Hi there, my name's Samuel Broad and I'm a third year PhD student at Queen Mary University of London. Under the supervision of Professor Fulvio Diaquisto, I'm currently carrying out a research project investigating the effect of acute emotional states such as depression and anxiety on the inflammatory immune response. Today I'm going to take you through the ELISA, or enzyme-linked immunoadsorbent assay, a technique I commonly use in my research. The ELISA is a means of very accurately and specifically detecting small molecules such as cytokines or hormones in solution. Developed over 50 years ago, the ELISA has become one of the most commonly used techniques in clinical and research laboratories, making understanding of its process a vital skill for any aspiring life scientist. All ELISAs will have two core components. One is the use of an antibody to bind a specific target antigen of interest, and two is the use of an enzyme to detect the presence of that antibody. Today I'm going to take you through perhaps the most commonly used of all the ELISA techniques, the sandwich ELISA, which I'll be using to detect the presence of the cytokine interleukin-6 in the culture medium of macrophages I have been growing. The presence of interleukin-6 within this culture medium will be indicative that these macrophages are in a state of activation. To begin with, an antibody specific to our target antigen of choice, in this case interleukin-6, is coated across the wells of a 96-well plate or strip of wells. Incubation overnight allows this antibody to bind to the well surface, and this binding in turn will allow us to wash away any other contaminant proteins while the antibody remains. The following day, the plate wells are washed three times in a wash solution consisting of PBS and a mild detergent. It is very important to ensure that the plate is thoroughly dried and all detergent has been removed from the plate, as any remaining detergent will affect the overall procedure. In order to prevent non-specific binding of contaminant molecules to the plate surface or incorrect binding to our capture antibody, we then treat each well of our 96-fold plate with a blocking solution. Blocking solutions typically consist of mixtures of proteins or detergents which bind any sticky spots upon the plate surface or the antibody itself. Blocking typically lasts for at least one hour at room temperature. Following the coating and blocking of this first antibody, we then wash the plate again in the same manner as previously. We are then ready to add our samples to the wells. A large variety of samples can be added to the ELISA wells, provided they are in solution. This includes saliva, blood, or in our case, cell culture media. Out of the countless molecules that can make up our culture media, our capture antibody will only bind our specific antigen of interest, interleukin-6. It is this high level of specificity that makes the ELISA such a powerful assay. In addition to our samples, we also add purified solutions of our antigen of interest to separate wells upon our 96-well plate. These standards, as they are commonly called, will allow us to quantify the exact level of interleukin-6 within our samples. Here you can see me adding eight separate dilutions of interleukin-6 at concentrations ranging from 500 to 4 picograms per mil. The plate is then incubated again in order to allow the antigen to bind to our capture antibody. The incubation period normally lasts for at least two hours, however this time can be increased to 24 in order to increase the accuracy of the assay. With our target molecule bound to the capture antibody, we are able to wash the plates again in the same manner as previously in order to wash away any unbound antibody, antigen or contaminating molecules. We then add an additional antibody across each well of our 96 well plate. Referred to as the detection antibody, this antibody is also specific for our antigen of interest, IL-6. However, it will bind a different epitope to our capture antibody. This prevents competition for binding, which could affect the results of our experiment. For this particular experiment, my detection antibody will be conjugated to a small molecule called biotin. We then incubate again for one hour at room temperature and wash again in exactly the same manner as before. Our target molecule should now be caught or sandwiched between two antibodies. That is why this assay is called a sandwich ELISA. As I mentioned previously, one end of our detection antibody is linked or conjugated to a small molecule called biotin. Biotin in turn is able to bind at high speed and with very high strength to a protein called streptavidin. We add a solution of streptavidin bound or conjugated to another enzyme across each well of our plate and incubate for at least 30 minutes to allow it to bind. Let's recap what's happened in the well so far. Bound across each well of our 96 well plate, we have a capture antibody, which is in turn bound to our antigen of interest, interleukin-6. Bound to another portion of our interleukin-6, we have our detection antibody, which is linked or conjugated to the small molecule biotin. Finally, 
bound to that biotin molecule, we have a further molecule of streptavidin, which has been conjugated to an enzyme. Several different enzymes can be bound to our streptavidin molecule. The most common, and the one we'll be using in this experiment, is horseradish peroxidase, commonly abbreviated to HRP. After washing away any unbound molecules of conjugated enzyme from the plate, we then apply a substrate for horseradish peroxidase. Oxidation of this substrate should produce a visible color change. The amount of color change we see will be directly proportional to the number of enzyme molecules and hence target antigen molecules present upon the plate. It is this color change we can use to quantify the level of antigen present. Another advantage of biotin is that it is able to bind multiple streptavidin conjugates. This increases the number of enzyme molecules in the well, amplifying the color change. This improves detection accuracy. The enzymatic reaction is stopped by the addition of an acidic stop solution to each well of our plate. This will cause a color change from blue to yellow, and it is the intensity of this yellow color which will allow us to quantify the amount of target antigen present in each well. We are able to measure the intensity of this color change using a photometer specifically designed for 96 well plates, often simply called a plate reader. The light absorbance values produced in each well for our samples we can calculate the concentration of interleukin-6 by comparison to the absorbance values produced by our standards. This is done by plotting the absorbance values for our standards on one axis against their known concentrations on another and plotting a line of best fit for each of these standards across the graph. In our case, we can find the concentration of interleukin-6 in our samples by plotting the point of intersection from its known absorbance value to its corresponding concentration value on our graph, provided, of course, this absorbance value falls within the range of our standards. Today, I have given you a brief overview of the protocol required to carry out a sandwich ELISA. I hope you have found this information to be of use. I will now end this video with a brief recap of the entire experimental procedure.